U.S. Army awards General Dynamics contract for next generation M1E3 Abrams tank design. Australia to build nuclear submarines. Boeing wins $7.5 billion contract from U.S. Air Force for guided bombs. U.S. military completes major exercise in Africa. U.S., Japan, and South Korea to hold Freedom Edge exercise. NATO reinforces troops to deter Russia. U.S. Army awards General Dynamics contract for next-generation M1E3 Abrams tank design. Recently, Brigadier General Jeffrey Norman, head of the U.S. Army M1E3 Main Battle Tank Development Group, revealed that the tank's development has begun based on initial designs. General Dynamics Land Systems has submitted a proposal, which is currently under review by the Army Procurement Department. The timeline for the development process is expected to be determined this fall. As early as last year, the U.S. Army announced the development of the new generation M1E3 Abrams main battle tank intended to replace the existing SEP V4 upgrade plan. Project officials have recently indicated that the plan has entered the initial design phase. The future focus will be on high mobility, new power systems, and active protection, with the hope of synchronizing its service entry with the new generation XM-30 infantry fighting vehicle. One factor in ditching the SEP V4 was that for decades, the upgrades on the M1 Abrams simply added more of everything, including armor and advanced equipment, but it also added a lot of weight. The original version of the American M1 that entered service just over four decades ago weighed in at a relatively lean 67.6 tons, while the current models in service today exceeding 73 tons. Aside from being overweight, the Abrams tank's engine air intake filters require frequent cleaning, sometimes twice a day. If not maintained properly, the engine can easily fail. Although not many Abrams tanks are in service in Ukraine, this characteristic may significantly reduce their combat effectiveness. If a failure occurs, the tanks must be sent to Poland for technical maintenance and overhaul. In addition to this issue, the Abrams tank also has a serious fuel consumption problem. Norman emphasized that the M1E3 will be vastly different from the current Abrams tanks. Over the next 18 months, approximately until the end of next year, the military will test the engineering technologies planned for the new tank, such as an automatic loading mechanism, hybrid power systems, and integrated active protection systems. The goal is to achieve significant weight reduction for the new generation Abrams tank. He noted that the current M1A2 SEP series tanks weigh around 73 tons. In the future, the configuration of the M1E3 will be adjusted, including the addition of remote control turrets to reduce the tank's weight to below 60 tons. Australia to build nuclear submarines. According to a report by The Australian on May 30th, Australia will develop an AUKUS-class nuclear submarine as part of the AUKUS alliance. Designed to launch next-generation hypersonic missiles, this submarine, if fully realized, will significantly enhance Australia's strike capabilities. Vice Admiral Jonathan Mead, head of the Australian Submarine Agency, stated that the AUKUS-class submarine will possess more firepower than the U.S. Virginia-class submarines and will offer additional space to accommodate unmanned underwater vehicles and special forces. Speaking at a summit in Australia, Meade highlighted that the submarine will be capable of launching longer-range hypersonic missiles and carrying more torpedoes. Additionally, it will feature a larger reactor, enabling it to provide more power. The Australian revealed that the AUKUS-class submarine, exceeding 10,000 tons, will be larger than the Virginia-class submarines, which have a displacement just over 7,000 tons. Australia's six conventionally powered submarines have a displacement of approximately 3,300 tons, underscoring the substantial size of the AUKUS class. However, there is no detailed report on the exact number of missiles the AUKUS class submarines will be able to carry. Meade also disclosed plans to encourage Australian investors to invest in the production of U.S. submarines, urging them to support American production facilities. This statement comes as Australian taxpayers have contributed $4.6 billion to promote the production of U.S. submarines, 
ensuring the U.S. can deliver on its promise of three Virginia-class submarines to Australia. Meade emphasized that the biggest issue currently facing the AUKUS project is the shortage of skilled labor. Finding and training the necessary workforce is a critical focus for Australia. Boeing wins $7.5 billion contract from U.S. Air Force for guided bombs. The U.S. Air Force and Boeing have signed a contract to produce more kits that convert bombs into guided weapons, known as Joint Direct Attack Munitions. The contract is valued at nearly $7.5 billion. The report states that Boeing will provide JDAM tail kits and other materials under a sole source, fixed price contract, which will run until the end of February 2030. However, the contract does not specify the delivery schedule or quantity. During the contract period, Boeing's St. Louis plant in Missouri will manufacture the kits and related spare parts and provide maintenance, technical assistance, and laser JDAM sensor kits. The U.S. Air Force noted that the exact number of JDAM kits to be supplied by Boeing is not yet determined. When asked, Boeing deferred the question to the U.S. Air Force. The U.S. Air Force stated that since the U.S. Navy also contributed funds for this contract, JDAM supplied by Boeing will be available to the U.S. Navy as well. Additionally, foreign customers will receive a portion of the JDAM supply, as nearly $228.2 million of the contract's funding comes from foreign military sales. To create JDAM, the U.S. Air Force or Navy attaches guidance tail kits to unguided dumb bombs weighing between 500 and 2,000 pounds. These tail kits include navigation systems and GPS guidance control units, which direct the bombs to ground targets even in adverse weather conditions. The cost of each JDAM kit ranges from $25,000 to $84,000, depending on the annual purchase volume by the Air Force. In 2019, the Air Force procured 30,872 units, 24,794 units in 2020 and 17,300 units in 2021, with procurement numbers dropping to several thousand in the following years. U.S. military completes major exercise in Africa. According to an AP report on June 1st, the African Lion exercise held by the U.S. military in Africa has concluded in Morocco. This is the largest annual joint military exercise conducted by the U.S. in Africa. The completion of this exercise aims to deepen cooperative relationships. Over the past two weeks, approximately 8,100 soldiers from more than 30 countries participated in the exercise in locations including Tunisia, Ghana, Senegal, and Morocco. The entire exercise spanned two weeks, with the final event held in Morocco. General Michael Langley, commander of U.S. Africa Command, stated that since 2004, the scale of the exercise has continuously expanded. Not only has the number of participating military personnel increased, but the scope of training has also broadened. It is no longer limited to the security domain, allowing the military to better adapt to new challenges in today's increasingly volatile regional environment. U.S., Japan, and South Korea to hold Freedom Edge exercise. According to recent reports, the U.S., South Korea, and Japan held a meeting in Singapore. Following the meeting, the three countries issued a joint statement announcing that they have agreed to conduct a new trilateral military exercise called Freedom Edge for the first time this summer. The Pentagon stated that the Freedom Edge trilateral exercise, decided by the secretaries and ministers, has been confirmed. The process of the trilateral exercise will proceed steadily based on the multi-year trilateral exercise planning system. As the first joint combined exercise that these three nations will conduct together, it demonstrates the growing cooperation between them and the improved relationship between South Korea and Japan. The name of this new exercise, Freedom Edge, is a combination of two existing exercises, Freedom Shield, an annual joint exercise conducted by South Korea and the United States simulating a North Korean invasion, and Keen Edge, a joint exercise conducted by the United States and Japan to respond to regional threats, including those from North Korea. According to Yonhap News Agency, the exercise will take place across various domains, including land, sea, air, and cyberspace.
The exact date and location of the Freedom Edge exercise have not been decided yet, but a local news outlet reported that the USS Ronald Reagan will take part in the upcoming exercise before its scheduled turnover with the USS George Washington. NATO reinforces troops to deter Russia. According to Reuters, on June 2nd, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz stated that NATO is set to expand eastward and strengthen its military deployments in the eastern regions. This move by NATO is intended to deter Russia. Russia has pointed out from multiple perspectives that NATO's actions severely threaten its security, suggesting that NATO is preparing for potential conflicts with Russia. Scholz emphasized that Russia should clearly understand that NATO will, if necessary, deploy more troops to the Baltic states, including Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, to defend itself. Germany has indicated that it will permanently station a brigade in the region. This strategy is considered a necessary security measure. As early as last year, Germany and its allies had decided to increase troop numbers in the Baltic region. The Baltic states, all of which border Russia, are of significant strategic importance. NATO has stationed 3,000 soldiers in the region since 2017. Following the outbreak of the Russia-Ukraine war in 2022, NATO substantially increased its troop presence there. In July of last year, NATO decided to further boost its troop deployments and optimize its operational structure. By the end of the year, Germany and Lithuania signed a long-term garrison agreement under which Germany will send around 5,000 troops, approximately one brigade, to be stationed in Lithuania on a long-term basis. An advanced deployment team of about 150 troops will arrive in Lithuania by the end of this year, with the main force set to follow next year.